Hi everyone, Linda Rodriguez from PrepareBeforeDisaster.com. Today I wanted to share with you some tips on creating your emergency kit regarding your pets. And you know, a lot of people uh, they'll remember to pack things for themselves, but not necessarily for their pets. And we've gone over in some other videos that you want to have enough water, you know, one gallon per person per day. But you need to remember for your pets as well, and it depends on how many pets you have as to how much water you're going to need. Uh, same thing would hold true for the food. So you want to remember to have water, you want to remember to have food packed for them, um, you want to remember to have a chew toy or something like that for them. If they have a favorite toy at home, buy a second toy just like it. Put it in the kit and that way they're nice and comfortable and they've got their favorite toy that they're playing with. They're, they're going to be in a strange place. Um, so we want to try and make them as comfortable as possible. Um, as far as medications, if there's any medications that your pets are on, you want to make sure that you talk to your vet, let them know that you are building an emergency kit, and see if you can get a smaller supply instead of having to buy a whole you know, week, month, whatever from them. Um, preferably, you know, a three-day supply is good. Um, also, you want to have a leash. A collar and a leash is you know, going to be mandatory because if you have... Uh, if you're staying at a shelter and you are having your animal stay in your car outside of the shelter and you need to take that animal out to relieve itself, you've got to have it on a leash. So make sure that you have a collar and a leash for your um, pet. I also would recommend um, some kind of a transportation um, container like uh, a foldable uh, crate or I have Shih Tzus so it's pretty easy. I just have those um, leather kind of carry kits or you can even have a cardboard box that you can get from the vet or whatever very inexpensive for you know cats and things like that unless you have a cat like I do that's 20 pounds then you need a dog carrier for it um, but I have a, a number of them and it's good because it, you may be transporting your pet somewhere else um, you may need to maybe they're gonna feel more secure being in the crate where they're not going to make a mess as opposed to if you let them run free in your car and then you find out that you know they've made some messes in your car so um, definitely recommend to have those um, I've got mine at a thrift store for like five bucks or something like that so you know I don't recommend going to Petco or any of those you know places um, Target brand name stores whatever just go to your regular thrift store stop in every once in a while see if they have something like that Go on Craigslist or, you know, check in the newspaper where people are selling things. And you can pick up crates for a minimal price from what it would cost you to go out and get one brand new. Again, everything I'm doing here, I don't want you to spend a fortune. I just want you to be prepared. So if I have found any ways to help myself be prepared that are less expensive, I will certainly pass them on to you. Um, the other thing that you want to make sure that you have is um, to carry phone numbers with you uh, in, in that container for your animals, uh, of your humane society, of your vet, of a kennel, of a friend or a family member that might be willing to take your pet in, in, in the event that, you know, something should happen. If you go to a shelter, the shelters will not allow you to have your pet come in with you unless it's a working service animal. So your pet will have to remain outside. You can choose to stay outside, you know, with your pet and camp out. Um, but probably not the most comfortable thing for you and probably not the most comfortable thing for your pet as well. So have those numbers available, maybe even uh, prepare ahead of time and make a phone call to a friend or a family member and find out in the event something should happen, are they willing to take your pets in for you for a short period of time, maybe up to three days. Um, so that's really uh, what I would recommend. It's pretty basic and simple. You just want to think about your pets, not forget the basic needs that they're going to have, and maybe try and find some place where they're going to be more comfortable, which is going to ultimately make you more comfortable in the event there should be some kind of an emergency or a disaster. You can find this video and this list on my website, which is preparedbeforedisaster.com. I encourage you to go on the website, check out the other videos. Uh, this is just a breakdown of one of the groups of things that you would want to have in your emergency kit rather than overwhelm you with a whole big list of all the things that you should have for all of your family members you know such as uh, 
your pets or your infants or yourself or what have you, uh, I found, found that it would be easier for me to break it down into smaller sections so that you can say, oh, you know what, I can go do that right now. Tonight, tomorrow, I can go get these things ready for my animal. Uh, and in that way, you can get yourself being prepared rather than me give it to you in one whole lump sum and you say, you know what, I don't have time to do that right now. I'll do it this weekend, next week, next month, and it just doesn't get done. So um, it, it is broken down on the website. I have many more um, things that would go into your kit. I'm talking about many other situations and types and ways to be prepared. So please go on there and visit that. Um, I also encourage you to go on and check the About Us section of the website, which gives you a little bit more insight and background into me, um, uh, why I do these videos uh, in the first place, what kind of a background or certification or anything like that that I might have in regards to having any idea what I'm talking about, which I do, um, but I want you to know that. So, um, you know, please check the website and please pass it on to your friends and your family because I do this not just for you to be safe and prepared, but for your friends and your family. So please pass it on. It's an excellent gift to give to someone for them to be prepared in the event of an emergency. And you will feel wonderful when you find out that what you passed on to them helped them to get through that situation and maybe even helped to save their life. So I encourage you, I challenge you to pass this information on to anybody that you know. And until then, be safe and be prepared. Be prepared. I can talk. Thank you. Bye-bye.